Hey guys, welcome back. First of all, I'm sorry we're late with this webisode. We had a little bit of snow. <laughs> yeah, believe me. Man, I've been shoveling. Got with it. But now it's time to get some finishing done. All right, where we're going to start is we're going to start with the interior or the case, not the tiger maple, but the popper case. I'm going to spray all of my shell. I'm going to spray out everything with a sealer primer. Now, the one I prefer is the shellac based bin. It's made by Zinzer, it's a shellac base, and it's a white primer. And then they call it a stain blocker and all of that. You know, there's no better sealer than shellac. So what this is going to, and it's compatible under anything. So what this is going to give me, it's going to give me a uniform color going in. It's going to seal everything. Now the cool thing about it is, if I just used a typical water base, anything on this poplar, it's going to fuzz. You know, it's going to fuzz up and I'm going to get grain swelling and all the good stuff. By using the bins under it, I don't get that. I'm sealing the wood down. Now here's what's going to happen. I'm going to put a coat of bins on it. I'm going to come back. I'm going to scuff sand it with some 320. Clean it off. Put another coat on it just to make sure I've got good coverage. Now when I put the second coat on, I'm going to thin it some. Right now, I'm using it straight out of the can. Now, the gun I'm going to be using is a gravity-fed HVLP. This is that one Woodcraft sells. It's the Wood River, and it's not very expensive. And I'm, I'm using the same needle nozzle in it that came with it. Needles and nozzles. Now, those of you who have watched the finishing DVD, you know what I'm talking about. Those of you who haven't, I'm not going to tell you to get it. But needles and nozzles are very important. This is a 1.4, which is pretty fine for water for a heavy base product, and this is. Again, I could thin it. But because the gravity fed, I've got good fluid down on top. And it's just as it implies, it's the weight of the fluid that's pushing it down through here to the needle so that I can get it out. Now, the one of the things, the reason I'm going to spray this is I want you to learn how to spray. It's the fastest, easiest way of finishing. And it opens up a whole lot more opportunity for you. Now, like I said, this is an HVLP gun, and what that means is high volume low pressure means it does not require a lot of air pressure and the more air pressure you have the more goes just into the air this is a pressurized this is the kind of gun you see with a turbine now this is a turbine air the way this works is that they've actually got a pressure tube going into the cup on the bottom and there's a tube in here that forces the fluid that the pressure in the cup forces the fluid up the fluid tube again needles nozzles water based finishes are the future they're coming that's just the way it is. I don't care what anybody says, they're coming. They're, well, they're not, they're here. But what's going to make them predominant is that most of you guys are working in your garages, in your basements, and whatever, where well, you don't have all the toxins with them. You certainly don't have all the smell with them. Now, the shellac, the bins, it's got shellac in it, okay? So, yeah, it's flammable. And you can brush it thin it a little bit. Now if you're going to brush the bins, you want a good natural hair brush because it's shellac base or solvent. If it was a water base, you want to use a synthetic brush 
to understand that you know you wash your hair and it kind of gets frizzy it does the same thing with a brush so you don't want natural hair for water base you want a good fine synthetic or you want you, you know use one of the foam brushes you can't use the foam brush in a shellac based product the shellac will well, you'll stick it in, but what you're going to pull out is just a stick. It'll dissolve the foam brush. Anyway, and you know, you want a good rest, you want a good OSHA and NIOSHA approved mask. I don't care what you're spraying. Now, I don't know how well we can look around my booth here a little bit. We'll do our best. Up here, these two filters this is a, this is just a big trunk and it goes upstairs we have an attic and it's got a big we we took a big old squirrel cage out of a uh, big old furnace and what it's doing is it's there's filters up top it's pulling air from up there through here and what it does is it pressurizes the room now what you can't see is over here we've got a big exhaust fan all right, but what we've got is we've got this air exchange is pumping more air in than that's pulling out. The reason for that is we, ha we have a dedicated booth. But here's the thing. If we just close this room up and turn that fan on, every crack, corner, crevice, it's just going to be sucking dirt right through it. And even if we have a wall that has all kind of filters in it, it still is going to pull dust and dirt from the outside. Most of the contaminants and dirt and dust that you get in your finish usually comes from two places. It's really usually not the environment. As long as you've got some good airflow, it's usually from your person. So I'm kind of, I'm dressed to finish. Now, what, when we spray this thing, what I want you to pay attention to, because the only thing we're going to be able to do is just kind of turn the camera on and let you watch. When you're spraying something, you never want, you see guys doing this with a gun. That's not, that, that's not how you do it. You want to hold your gun parallel to your surface and you want, to, you want to move with it. Every time you pass, what you want to do is you want to go past where you spray, release the trigger, drop down about halfway and come back. Hit the fluid before you start across it. Now most of your guns are going, this, this little knob right here, this controls the fan, which is how wide or narrow it is. This knob right here, this controls my fluid. Now in this case, I've got it cranked all, just about all the way out. Because I got a heavy fluid, I got a thick fluid. This is your air. Now this runs off a compressor, and this is my air adjustment. This one, I think it's, yeah, this is, this is my fan, this is my fluid. Depending upon thicknesses, which is called viscosity of different liquids, you have to learn to adjust them. If you have a thin liquid and you've got that fluid needle backed way out, then you're just going to get a flood. Not what you want. But you also do not want to get what's called dry spray. The object of spraying is, to, you got to think about what it is. Spraying is taken, you're creating a millions of droplets of, of liquid. They go onto a surface. They flow together to form a film. If you get too little fluid on here, it doesn't have enough to flow together. If you get too much, well, then you get a flood. These are laying flat. So I'm not going to get runs so much unless I really overdo it. 
But if they were vertical, that's what causes runs. Again, what I want you to do is just watch me spray. Okay, pay attention, not to me. Spray, pay attention to how I'm working the gun. The overlaps. Now you notice the way we're set up. Normally, or I could, I could run a little bit of uh, masking tape along these shelf edges, but I'm not gonna get that much fluid, and I'm not gonna build these edges up that much. When I'm done finishing, what I'll do is I'll just lightly scuff them a little bit with a piece of sandpaper to make sure they fit in my dado. Now the question would be, well, if you get paint on these, then is the glue gonna hold? Yeah, it's all water-based. I mean, it's gonna hold enough. It's not gonna be like a wood to wood, you know. But the other side to it is, is the screws and all are gonna hold this together just fine. So it's not an issue. All right, I'm gonna start spraying and you're gonna start watching.
All right, I'm going to let these flash just a little bit. Now, the first thing you noticed is I, cro I did what's called a cross hatch. Put it on one way, came back the other. One of the things with spraying is get to be a pretty good shot. Now, as soon as this flashes off, which this shellac dries pretty fast, now I want to tell you something. The bins by itself, it does not have a bad color. It's a bright white. If you wanted to scuff this, put another coat of bends on it, come back, give it a light scuff with like some 320 or 600 or something, throw a coat of wax on it just so it feels really nice, you're done. You got a nice painted interior. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to be switching everything around. And I'll come back, I'm going to go ahead and do the bottoms of everything. Now, in this case, I'm going to paint the entire case, inside and outside, so there's not an issue. Sometimes I paint just the interior, and I'll stain the, ex I'll stain the outside of the, the corner. In this case, it's, you know, you're not going to see it, it's just as easy to paint the whole thing and be done with it. So that's what I'm going to do. And it'll give it good, be nice and clean and crisp and make for a good unit. So I'm going to let this set up just a little bit so when I grab these shelves, I'm not, my fingers aren't sticking. I'm going to flip them. We're going to come back, do some more painting. All right, guys, I jumped ahead on you a little bit. What I've done, I've, put a, I've got two coats of... Uh, the bends on here. Now when you feel this after the bends, it's going to be rough. And what's happening is all the fiber in this wood is raising up. The sealer is hardening it, and so now we need to scuff it. Now when you hear me talk about scuffing, this is what I'm referring to. Now what I'm using is a, is a 320 grit little sanding sponge. Sandpaper works just fine. But you want the, the sterated, you want the, the white or the yellow that has the coating on it to prevent, prevent it from clogging up. Don't worry about it with water base, it's not an issue. That's some, something somebody conjured up out there. I've talked to a whole lot of, I've talked to an awful lot of water base companies and I know from my own experience uh, the, the, their theory was was that the the lubricant that's used on it is going to come off and when you spray your finish on it's going to make your finish peel uh, you know as long as you're buying a good quality sandpaper that's just not going to happen uh, I know of no one that's experienced that no one anyway so what you want to do is all you want to do is scuff sand this enough and it's almost a wipe. You shouldn't have to really be scuffing really hard. And it's going to dust and when you feel it, it should just be smooth. It should be really smooth. You know, there's two ways of making wood smooth. One is that you work the wood until you work the finish. The bends builds up pretty good. So the furthest we went sanding this, was 120. I didn't go anywhere past that. Now, that said, now as I scuff it, it's coming up perfectly smooth. Uh, you know, right now this out here feels like a piece of sandpaper, 
But the minute I touch it with the 320, just a little bit, it's perfectly slick. Now the other thing I did, and I told you earlier, you could simply take a good wax and you could scuff this with the 320 and put a coat of wax on it and it's going to feel like a million dollars and it's going to look good too. You think 320 is too coarse. It gives you a kind of a matte satin look. Now what I've got here, what I did is I've scuffed all of this. I went ahead and I put my top and my bottom in because I can get in here to spray it. And I put it together so you could see that. Now what I did here was I just ripped a little bit of MDF and well, just stuck a little finishing nail in here and I'll pull it right out when I'm done just to cover my dados because I don't want a bunch of paint build up in there because that could affect my fit. Now I've got it cleaned down. I'm going to get my respirator on and turn on the fans and this time what you're going to watch is you're going to see me spray this and I, this time we're going to be spraying vertical. And you'll see, again, that pass, release the trigger, pull it, come back, release. You want to be about six to eight inches from the piece. You want to fan about six to eight inches wide. Now, the paint I'm using, I'm using General Finishes Antique White milk paint. Now you can brush this stuff just wonderfully. It does great. You, and I tell you what, use, use again, use a good synthetic because it's water or use one of your painting pads or a foam brush. It does, a, it does a nice job. But any good latex paint or water-based paint will do. The same thing applies. Now what I could I can also buy this. Let me show I can you. also buy this directly from them from General Finishes in a th this is a finish a t this is a tenant finish meaning it's finished it's got got color in it that's the same as this. This is more durable than this maybe. This stuff's tough. Now this is not the same as the milk paint you get in those bags and mix. That's not what this is. Now the reason I decided to go with this is because you can buy it easily. You know, Woodcraft, Rockler, uh, Lee Valley, everybody out there is carrying, you know, the general finished products. So you can pick it up pretty easy. Now, I'm going to spray it. Now, th this stuff is pretty thick. And if you're going to brush it, go with it as is. See? It's real thick. Real heavy. So what I did is I thinned it, I think, about 15%. Now, let me tell you how to tell if you've got it thin enough and I'm using the same Wood River gun, and I'm using the same 1.4 tip that came in it. Now here's a way to tell. If, but get a medium mesh strainer. If it will go through that strainer pretty good, you're thin enough. You're good enough. It will spray. All right. Let me get a different respirator on. Blow these off. Now somebody's going to ask me about tacking them. Uh, I got one somewhere, but I'm just going to blow them off. Don't y'all tell them me, okay? Oh, yeah, and I'm not advertising them, but I'm going to show you something. I got me a couple of them. Uh, this is a... I don't think we can get a shot of them. Yeah, you can. You can see it right here. Can you get it, Sherry? This is Wood River... I mean, Wood River... Uh, Painter's Pyramids turntables. I got a couple blocks of wood on it to get it up. Now the other thing I've already done, I've already sprayed underneath. I've already painted that. Up in here I painted this but not a lot. 
Now the other thing I did, right here where my drawer is going to run, I put a piece of masking tape. Y'all hear all that? They're shoveling the roof off. We got enough snow, we got a... It's a mess. Never mind. Alright. Let me get a respirator and let's paint these things. Okay. All right. Now, one of the things I'm looking at is I'm looking at the sheen. I'm looking at the gloss behind this. Now, this is not a gloss paint, but it's going to all go on wet. And I see a nice, even sheen. If I saw a little spot looked rough, that means it's dry. In that case, I might just real quick hit it. But we're doing good. Let's keep going.
All right, guys. First coat is drying. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually scuff this again, blow it off good, and put a second coat on it. Then, because it's a water-based paint, paint, that's the key. I don't care if you just buy a latex paint. You're not going to get a latex or any water-based paint to flow out, level out, like a finish. It's just not its nature. It's not what it's designed to do. So to get that really slick, feel like warm butter, I have two choices. Choice one, which is what I'm going to do, would be to scuff it and put a good wax on the inside. Really, really does nice. Now it's not going to take much to smooth this up, so I may jump up to a 600 sandpaper or I might even just use some steel wool. Any, but in either case, I'm just going to rub it enough to make sure it's good and smooth. I'm going to throw a coat of wax on it. I'm going to be done. Now, one of the other things I did is, if you remember when I was building this, I was using a washer-headed screw. When I put it back together, I'm just using a regular flathead screw, so it kind of countersinks. Now, the reason for that is, is these, are all, these shelves are now glued in here. When I'm done... I'm going to take the screws out and I'm going to replace them. This is an inch and five eighths rose head nail. So that black nail is what you're going to be seeing from the outside. Now a couple things. One, if I would have wanted, I could also glaze the outside of this with a Van Dyke brown or something and kind of make it nasty and old looking, whatever. I could do the same thing with the inside if I really want to make an antique looking one. But I, I just kind of like the old rose heads. They're kind of old, antique looking. Uh, you can get these from Horton Brass as well. And uh, it's just one of those little things I like to do. Now, the second option, I know I jumped around. The second option to make the inside smooth and silky would be to coat it with a clear coat. Something like the high performance, whatever. If I really wanted to add to make it even tougher, then I could cross link it and I've got a finish that's almost bulletproof. But inside this corner cabinet, it's just not going to get that kind of wear. So I'm going to go with the wax. Now, in the event that you wanted to change the color, the only thing you do is clean it down good with some mineral spirits, get it wet, take a dry rag, clean it off. That removes the wax and uh, paint it again. You know, it's funny. I'm going to get in trouble right now. I feel it coming. Women like painted furniture. Men don't. Now, the reason women like painted furniture is, well, you can change it pretty easy. So, if it doesn't fit your decor, then they can get them a bucket of paint and get in there and change it. And, you know, you can paint it whatever color you want. This antique white just goes good with this color we've selected on the, uh, on the tiger maple. Okay, paint. I'm going to scuff it one more time. Another coat of paint. Let it all dry good. Scuff it. Coat of wax. Case is done. Now let's go over here and see how we're coming with the Tiger Maple. All right, before I get going too far, Ace and Big Bob and some of the guys out on the forum have been asking about the pegs. Now, yeah, I went back and pegged mine. Do you have to? No. They're pretty much looks, particularly on this door where we've got the coping stick, it's just not doing a lot. So they're not in real deep, but it gives that old antique look of a square peg in a round hole. And Big Bob, you would have known, said that the peg, some of them looked round instead of square. Here's what happens. He's right. Here's what happens. When you drive, the, this maple's hard. When you drive the peg in, what's going to happen is the peg will compress on the corner. 
a softer wood like a mahogany or something, not the case. Now, side note, if you're doing a mahogany or a pine or walnut or something that's a softer wood, then make sure you use a hardwood peg. I think I wrote it in the forum out there that if I'm doing mahogany, I use cherry. And that does well. If I'm doing walnut, I just go ahead and use walnut. Now, here's the thing with the peg. And I also made a comment that if you peg yours, make sure you put a clamp across this when you're driving the peg. Number two, don't use a mallet. And make sure this is down as tight as you can get it on, on something level. Because when you drive that peg, what can happen is that peg can try to split it. Don't let that happen. Here's the other thing, and I, I think we can get this. I've got a quarter inch peg going into a quarter inch hole. So what we want to do is you want to take that peg and just below from where you're going to go in is, is either sand it or whittle you a little round spot. This ain't whittling too good. My knife's pretty dull. But you get the point. Drive your peg. If you want to protect that square look, take a quarter inch mortising chisel that ain't full of goop. And simply set it over top of your peg hole, pop it, clean up your corners a little bit. Drive your peg. And don't miss. When you do that, now when that's sanded, that will be square. Give you a lot more of a square look. Now in the case of these doors, I only put them in about a half inch, if that. In the case, I went ahead and fully, I didn't go all the way through, but I made sure I caught the tenon. That's actually holding. Now, when we come back on our next webisode of this corner cabinet, we're going to be doing the Tiger Maple. Now, I'm going to show you this. You can see the drawer back here, it's already sanded. This is to 180, as well as you see the door. That's what we're looking for. At this point, remember, we've, we dyed it, sanded it with 120, dyed it again, and we could if we'd have needed to use 80, that would have been all right. Dyed it again, came back, and sand it again with 120 and then this is a 180. Now remember we're using one part orange what is it two parts three parts of the light brown to intensify the curl even more we could use the light brown all the way through up to the last coat. That makes the curl even darker. Because you notice what we've got. We've got the curl is standing out. The hard, the hard grain on the surface, you know, it's back to, to white. And so what you so notice the, is, is that the only thing showing is the curl. So when we come back and dye this the final time, then, that, then what we're going to get is, is that curl is just going to blast out of there. Now once we've dyed this, then we're going to be giving it some oil. We're going to be giving it a coat of water locks to set the dye, pop the grain, and just kind of help seal everything. Now we could, and you'll see this, now we could just, just, just as well carry the water locks right on through. And I'm debating whether I do the water locks all the way through, or I go ahead and spray the top coat. I'm thinking I'd like to do the water locks. That just makes a killer finish. That, that old hand rub look. That's beautiful. 
All right, now the last thing I want to tell you guys, when we get about this painted surface, it, even if you brush paint this, okay, or use a pad or whatever, scuffing it in between coats is key. If you brush marks, it isn't going to hurt anything in here at all. And, you know, but the final thing, scuff it down, throw you a good coat of wax on there, and it will feel really nice. It will feel nice and smooth. Again, even if you just use a latex paint, you know, just be particular in your, in your, in your painting. All right, guys, next time we come back, we're going to finish the Tiger Maple. Uh, we've got, we're going to finish the Tiger Maple in the next webisode. The last webisode, it will all be put together. It will be done. It will be finished. Then we're going to move on to the Mahogany Lowboy.